Prima Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing Brian Prothero, the editor of the book Comro's Legacy, which highlights some of the research and development carried out by the now defunct Chamber of Mines Research Organization, Comro, that could be revisited today, notably the portable gold analyzer for measuring the grade of gold at the rock face. Hi, Brian. It's great to chat to you once again. Mining Weekly would like to kick off this interview by obtaining some background on the portable gold analyzer that was developed by Comro. Why was the development request made by the gold mining industry? Basically, at the time, there was generally a fine balance between the gold price, the actual working cost of mining the gold, and the grade of the gold, the amount of gold in the rock being mined. And the industry couldn't do a great deal about uh, the gold price in the 80s and 90s. It was about $400 a tonne, and it fluctuated greatly. And only in the last 20 years has it increased dramatically. Uh, like today, it's now $2,350 an ounce. So at the time, the industry really looked at this relationship between the various parts and to determine whether it was economically viable to mine certain of the reefs where the gold was contained. And one aspect was obviously looking at reducing the working costs. And the Chamber of Mines Research Organization looked at increasing the productivity by developing machines. The industry also wanted a more accurate and really reliable and quick method of measuring the amount of gold in the reef being mined. And this was termed uh, the gold grade and usually measured in grams per tonne of rock mined. There were a number of inefficiencies with the existing method, which was the chip an assay method where you actually took samples from the face, which was chipping rock from the face, and then they were transported to surface where technical staff prepared them for analysis by the flame method. But this was a very time consuming process. Also, the gold in the reef, 50% were 30 centimeters thick, from 30 to about one meter, which was the stopping height and needed to be mined to access the reef. Forty uh, percent was uh, in that range, and ten percent was uh, really reefs much greater than one meter. But uh, in sampling, the gold could be in very fine particles in the face, or it could be uh, in the carbon leader case, for instance rather large, coarse particles. So when you took a sample, it was a bit of a hit or miss because you could take a sample, particularly in the coarse gold, where it indicated that there was little gold, or if you hit a coarse sample, then obviously it indicated there was a very rich vein. But this was a very unreliable method and they wanted a, a more accurate reliable method of doing this and um, that's where the work started in looking on developing an improved method which really enabled uh, the information to be sent quickly to management to enable them to make decisions about mining because mining a reef with little gold in it was obviously not desirable. And what was involved in the development and testing of prototypes? We followed the standard data, we called it research, exploration, the determination, development of the piece of equipment, then trials and adaptation. So we put a team together of experts in collaboration with uh, an external manufacturer of the equipment. And that was our 
way of actually undertaking research. And we looked at what was available and the, the route followed was looking at uh, developing a portable X-ray fluorescent instrument. So we produced four instruments and they were tested in the laboratory in simulated mining conditions. And obviously this process took place over a long time and the instruments were then uh, tested in this environment and issues like uh, intrinsic safety, the radiation aspect were needed addressing. Then they actually took extensive field evaluation. They took some of the instruments and they tested them and uh, they worked on methods of improving the speed of communication, capturing the information. And they did tests on a variety of elements, gold, uranium, lead, carbon and silica, for instance, because this, this was background information coming from the X-ray fluorescence so that they had to understand the physics of the process. And by doing that, they were able to actually develop something which actually captured the gold. So they developed the technology and the physics to capture the gold. So this is um, the process they actually followed initially. So there was a lot of field work involved. And then they actually developed what are called prototype. So that, that's really where proper field testing took place. And how was implementation and use in the mines undertaken? Well, because it was a new method of evaluating the grade of gold in the rock, they actually required a change in organizational structure in the traditional mining process. So this involved actually doing in situ analysis of the gold at the, at the reef. So the information then was actually uh, involved revised cycles, work cycling on mines, the capture of information, how it was downloaded because it was captured on the machine, for instance, and the machine was able to scan the face, basically. So you took it along the face and you scanned the face and it captured this uh, information and then you could download it on surface. So it was much quicker and it didn't involve the, the technical skills required in the laboratory. Uh, but the background required the training of personnel, the changing of uh, communication lines and so forth. So there's quite a bit of organization changes required on the minds on how to actually capture, interpret, and then that information was put in a way so that management could really make a decision about the value of continuing mining, for instance, because grade was everything. And finally, Brian, what in your view should be the biggest takeaway? Well, an interesting thing it showed is that when we undertook it on the mines, for instance, we did some testing for mines and the mines then decided to uh, reevaluate it at that time. And as a result of that, they proved that they gave results comparable to the traditional methods of chip and assay sampling. So it, it actually proved that it was a, a system that gave re reliable accurate, but also quick information. And what was interesting, what came from the analysis by the mines is that they started sharing the information between them so that they could actually have a picture of what the, the uh, air reef looked like. So if certain mines were mining a particular reef, they could actually share this information amongst each other and uh, plan what uh, the reef would look like and how to sample the reef. But um, unfortunately, uh, it was never commercialized uh, 
the manufacturer didn't really think that it was marketable because of the, the cost and the, the limiting aspect of the market. It was a, a very reduced market. I think the biggest thing to take away is uh, the industry thought, a number of industry thought that it was uh, an exceptional piece of equipment. And it had a huge potential benefits. But it also indicated the capacity in the chamber for undertaking the work and actually how modern changes and more recent changes could actually make this type of equipment more affordable, improve it, make it. Some people felt it was a bit uh, too bulky, but it was handheld. But uh, the, the modern uh, technology may make it more suitable, even more suitable for underground. There are many X-ray fluorescent pieces of equipment available, but they're not really geared for gold or they're not uh, suitably mine worthy and intrinsically safe for gold mining at depth where the environment is very uh, aggressive. So I think it highlights that there are many other type of pieces of equipment which weren't taken up by the industry, weren't commercialized within the portfolio of Comro, for instance. So I think there are, uh, there are many other aspects of Comro's research, which went on for 30 years. And uh, at its peak, uh, employed about 800 people. So a lot of information was produced, like the portable gold analyzer. That was Crema Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Brian Prothero, the editor of the book Comro's Legacy, which highlights research and development carried out by the defunct Chamber of Mines Research Organization that could likely be further advanced today with the use of new technology, particularly artificial intelligence.